Welcome back. This is Coketown's Officer Basic Course. Today we are going to examine the offensive tactical tasks of demonstration and feint. These offensive operations involve deceiving an enemy force as to the main avenue and disposition of an attack in order to weaken their defense and enable a higher chance of success for that attack. For historical examples of these types of operations, one can look at the mass deception carried out by the Allied forces in 1944 under the code name Operation Fortitude in which they created fake field armies, including the 1st U.S. Army Group under General Patton, to deceive the German high command into believing the Allies were preparing for simultaneous assaults in Norway and at Pali Calais, and not at Normandy, where the landings would occur on D-Day. Ich meine nur, weil Herr General doch diesmal die Rolle von Eisenhower spielen. Ich gewinne, weil ich gegen die Regeln vorgehe, Schiller. Wir erwarten, dass Sie am Pas de Calais angreifen, an der engsten Stelle des Kanals, nicht wahr? Und auch noch bei gutem Wetter. Das ist doch zu einfach, mein Lieber. Das liegt zu sehr auf der Hand. Ich wähle die weiteste Entfernung und wenn das Wetter am schlechtesten ist, ich greife hier an. In der Normandie. Und bei schlechtem Wetter. Yes. While that case involved fabricated units, another example can be seen via General Schwarzkopf from the U.S.-led coalition during the Gulf War conducting a similar deception operation involving a demonstration fire positioning Marines in the Persian Gulf during that operation, in which he also brought significant amount of public attention via news conferences and public appearances to bring attention to those maneuvers and to deceive the Iraqi command as to where the main effort would be. His actions did not end there, but also included aspects of a feint through the direct action of military assets, such as naval gunnery by the USS Missouri battleship, opening fire on select targets, and special operations conducting actions indicating preparation for an amphibious landing. This deception operation succeeded against the Iraqi forces and enabled the successful execution of the infamous left hook that led to the collapse of the entire front line and the defeat of the Iraqi forces within 100 hours of the start of the ground operation. Our plan initially had been to start over here in this area and do exactly what the Iraqis thought we were going to do, and that's take them on head on into their most heavily defended area. Also at the same time, we launched amphibious feints and naval gunfire in this area so that they continued to think that we were going to be attacking along this coast and therefore fix their forces in this position. Our hope was that by fixing the forces in this position and with this attack through here in this position, we would basically keep the forces here and they wouldn't know what was going on out in this area. And I believe we succeeded in that very well. An important concept when conceiving of deception operations is known as Magruder's Principle. Quoting here from Donald P. Wright, link in the description explaining the concept. The most effective form of military deception was the exploitation of the enemy's preconceptions, stating that commanders should try to convince an opponent to believe what he wants to believe anyway, that his current course of action is correct. Known as Magruder's Principle, this form of deception is based on the idea that it is far easier to exploit the enemy's beliefs than to alter those beliefs. Basically, it is far easier to convince an opponent that their initial read on a situation is correct through deception rather than attempting to prove to them through new evidence that they were wrong and that they need to readjust their strategy. Quoting at length here from FM 3-90-1, In military deception, a demonstration is a show of force in an area where a decision is not sought that is made to deceive an adversary. It is similar to a feint, but no actual contact with the adversary is intended. A feint in military deception is an offensive action involving contact with the adversary conducted for the purpose of deceiving the adversary as to location and or time of the actual main offensive action. A commander uses demonstrations and feints in conjunction with other military deception activities. They generally attempt to deceive the enemy and induce the enemy commander to move reserves 
and shipped fire support assets to locations where they cannot immediately impact the friendly decisive operation or take other actions not conducive to the enemy's best interests during the defense. Both forms are always shaping operations. The commander must synchronize the conduct of these forms of attack with higher and lower echelon plans and operations to prevent inadvertently placing another unit at risk. To sum up, demonstration and feints are similar in their intent to deceive the opponent while minimizing commitment and risk. Both are offensive operations and part of the attack tactical tasks. The primary difference between these two tasks, though, is the scale of engagement with the opposing force. Once more from FM 3-90-1. The principal difference between these forms of attack is that in a feint, the commander assigns the force an objective limited in size, scope, or some other measure. Forces conducting a feint make direct fire contact with the enemy, but avoid decisive engagement. Forces conducting a demonstration do not seek contact with the enemy. The benefit of assigning actual formations to conduct a demonstration is that it allows for a transition from a demonstration to a feint, with a feint being a more convincing form of a deception operation. However, the downside is that, true to economy of force, this dilutes potential combat power to be used in either the main effort or another supporting effort, as well as placing the feinting force at far greater risk. Now, let's take a look at a demonstration evolving into a feint during a recent match from the House Divided campaign. During this event, the USA team planned for a main assault against the CSA right, identifying it as key terrain that needed to be seized. The CSA similarly massed all of its forces in this location in order to retain it as an objective. An initial direct assault by the entire Union team resulted in a complete repulse by the CSA forces and a setback for the Union team. To dilute some of these defensive forces, the USA team aimed to achieve a deception operation through a demonstration of their forces, namely by a maneuver conducted by the 8th Pennsylvania and the 4th West Virginia under Major Knight and Lieutenant Guy, respectively. A quick note, this maneuver was planned during the strat sketch, making it a deliberate instead of a hasty attack. The initial movement saw the 8th PA and 4th West Virginia post up in a visible position opposite the point of contention on the CSA left, in full view of the opposing side. This resulted in an overcommitment of three full lines to defend the point directly by the CSA, including the NYV, PB, and HL. Once the USA launched its main attack against the CSA right, Knight and Guy moved their formations closer to the enemy line and engaged in direct fire, changing the maneuver from merely a demonstration to a feint, attempting to retain the attention of the arrayed CSA forces via their direct fire and allowing for the USA main attack more time to succeed. Unfortunately for the USA team, despite a successful deception through the demonstration and then feint of the 8th PA and 4th West Virginia, the stubborn defense of several CSA team units, including the HD, 9th Corps, and 83rd PVI, as well as the quick disengagement from the feint by PB and HL, allowed the CSA to hold their position on the right. However, although the attack failed, it was far more successful than the initial charge by the USA against the full force of the CSA line. The overall mission failed, but the demonstration and feint by 8th PA and 4th West Virginia succeeded in its objectives. Demonstrations and feints allow for the creation of imbalances in defensive formations with the ultimate goal of allowing for a main effort a higher chance of success with minimal risk or commitment of resources by the attacking side. Employing such tactics can help attackers overcome stubborn and strong defenses. But what do you think? Do you think demonstrations and feints are worth the time and effort in a game like War of Rights? What are some examples you have seen while playing the game? What did you think of the lesson? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.